Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Reaper Ron, and today we're going to be going over some more builds in Deep Rock Galactic. This time we're going to go over the gunner's uh, equipment, including the zipline launcher and the shield generator. I'm going to be going over a couple builds that I use with them. These ones do have quite a few uh, variants to them, and they mostly remain the same, uh, unlike what we did last time with the driller stuff, which changes quite a bit depending on how you build it. But let's just go over the zipline launcher, talk about its gear modifications, then we'll go over the shield generator. So in tier one, we have expanded ammo bags as our first option. This makes it so we get one additional uh, zip line. So instead of three, we get four. So we'll also get more when we resupply, which is pretty nice. The zip line launcher can be super useful in pretty much any mission, um, especially since you're going to be gunner, so you don't have the highest mobility. And it will be useful for anybody running driller or especially engineer to get you from place to place or create some safe zones um, if you intend on falling down to make your uh, getaway a little bit safer. Our second option is upgraded connecting joint. This makes it so we get a, uh, a steeper angle that we can shoot our zip line at. So we go from 32 degrees up to 38 degrees. This can really help. Um, it makes it so it's much easier to get zip lines where you want them to. You can get at a steeper angle so you don't have to back up as much, which might uh, mess up your distance. Um, this one can also be pretty useful. All of these ones in tier one can actually be quite useful. Our third option is reinforced anchor. This makes it so we get an additional 10 meters worth of reach from our zip line. So we go from 30 to 40. That can be pretty useful too. There are certain, uh, maps that have really large open areas, um, that have just particular heels across there that you might want to fire a zip line across so that you, you and your team can more easily maneuver them. So... In tier one, honestly, all three of these are really good options. I usually go with expanded ammo bags, but I have switched between each of these and they all feel really good. So I would recommend just checking out each one and finding which one you enjoy more. Um, there's no real wrong answer here in tier one. In tier two, we have one option, which is reinforced cable. Uh, this makes it so we get 10 more meters worth of reach with our zip line. Always useful. And then in tier three, we have uh, disconnection protection. This makes it so you take less damage from falling off the zip line. This applies to teammates as well. This one can be pretty useful, and it's a pretty nice quality of life thing for the zip line launcher. Your other option is increased motor traction. This makes it so you have a higher top speed on the zip line. This can be useful too. This makes it go from 250 to 325. Um, moving faster on the zip line is always nice, especially if you're running like the minigun overclock that makes it so you can't move. So, um, Using the zip lines is a good way to move back and forth and fire uh, into crowds or into a single large target. This one can be good, and again, this one I switch between pretty often. I usually go with the disconnection protection, but increased motor traction is also really good. So it's your call here. Um, the zip line gun is going to feel pretty much the same no matter which way you build it. Uh, increased ammo will allow you to shoot out another zip line, which is pretty nice, and you'll always get two zip lines whenever you resupply which can be really useful on missions like uh, extraction missions or even on pipeline missions if you need uh, large areas to move back and forth on. The connecting joint can always feel good on any sort of enclosed map where it's more difficult to use your zipline gun. This will just make it a little bit easier. And reinforced anchor will just give you increased range, which is always nice. It's the same with like these two where fall protection is always going to be useful on every map, more so on some than others and increased motor traction is always going to be useful as well. So it's really your call here. This is what I usually run on my zip line, but sometimes I run something like that or even potentially something like this, whatever you'd like. Um, they're all actually pretty good options. So moving on to the shield generator. Um, in tier one, we have shields regen faster. So the regen time is no longer 12 and a half seconds, it's 11 and a half seconds. Uh, saving one second can be useful. It's very good to have the shield generator up, especially when there's uh, especially when there's hordes or a downed ally or um, even a large target like an elimination mission where you're fighting a dreadnought. Uh, getting up your shield faster is really nice because you can toss it there and have a safe zone for a little while. So that's always useful to have it up quicker. Um, your second option is improved projector. This increases the shield's area of protection. So going from 2.7 uh, to 3.2. So it's a bit larger 
makes it a little bit easier for you to uh, protect allies. It fits a little bit better in protect area zones too, like on a salvage mission. So this one can be pretty useful too. So the way that I usually build the shield, shield generator is uh, streamlined integrity check just so that I can uh, have the shield up a little bit quicker. Uh, if you want to go with improved projector though, it's a pretty good option too. Your shield's going to come back a little bit slower, but it's not way noticeable compared to the uh, streamline integrity check. One second doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but it can make some difference. In tier two, we have fast charging capacitors. This makes it so our shields generate regenerate faster too. This is by an additional two seconds, so it would go from 12 and a half seconds to 10 and a half seconds or nine and a half seconds if you're using the uh, streamlined integrity check. Our second option is larger capacitors. This makes it so our shield lasts longer going from six seconds to seven and a half seconds. Having the shield last longer can be really useful because it will just buy your team a little bit more time, which can be really useful, especially if you have turrets nearby that can shoot them from like the engineer, or if you just need to gun them down with either your minigun or your auto cannon, it can be really useful in hordes. It can also be useful in uh, single target enemies like uh, oppressors. That one's pretty useful. I usually go with larger capacitors just so that my shield lasts longer. I enjoy the uh, extra time that you have there. In tier three, we have supercharged coils. This makes it so we get um, an even larger shield radius going from 2.7 to 3.5. So a bigger shield, uh, same as the tier one version. Our second option is lasting effect. This makes it so the shield effect is given to allies that move out of the shield for a few seconds. This can be pretty useful too. It will not allow enemies to target them quickly. It also will regenerate their shields quicker, which is really nice. Um, so it's pretty useful in a lot of situations. And then our last option is improved efficiency. This makes it so the shields last even longer, um, adding another half second to the duration so going from six to seven and a half or if you're running both the duration add-ons going from six to nine i usually run the duration add-on um i just enjoy this more this way my shield lasts for nine seconds it goes on cooldown i have it for 11 seconds it just kind of works out better for me that way it buys my team more time i enjoy it this way um this is one way that i usually build you could go with a um faster charging shield so that you can get it up more often and then really any of the tier three options is a pretty good way to go either having a larger area that way you just protect your teammates uh, more easily and more often so if your teammates are kind of doing crazy stuff this might help you could go with lasting effect or you could go with improved efficiency all of them are great with this build uh, going with the faster charge ones you could also go with a larger shield radius. This one can be useful in certain areas and again with certain teammates. If you have teammates that really like to move around um, to hop in and out, maybe scouts jumping around a bit. Um, going with improved projectors. Uh, usually shield lasts longer. That's what I usually go with. And then a, even a larger shield. So we have a four meter shield that's lasting for seven and a half seconds. This is plenty big so teammates know to run into the shield and will protect the area pretty well. It also comes up, uh, or it also lasts a bit longer, which is pretty nice. So those are the builds that I usually use with the shield generator. Uh, my most common one I'd say is this one, or sometimes I do this one. So these have been my builds with Gunner. Hopefully you found this uh, kind of informative or entertaining or whatever it might be. Uh, if you guys did, be sure that you're subscribed. That way you get notifications whenever I post any of these videos. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it, and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool, and bye.